So ultimately, we want to calculate economic growth. And we said economic growth was the change in real GDP per capita. So we've been talking about what it means to be real, right? Taking out inflation. So now we understand how to do that and, and what that uh, means. So once we have our real GDP, we can divide by the population, so get real GDP per capita, and then we can use our calculation of new minus old divided by old times 100 to get our economic growth. Now, we saw before that economic growth tends to go up over time. We took out that long-term trend and saw the, the instability that exists there. So now let's calculate the economic growth. So we're going to start first from real GDP, divide by the population, and then use our growth calculation of new minus old divided by old. Now before I do that here, I just want to point out uh, something interesting. Now this graph is a little different than the one you saw in the previous video. So notice in this video, when we look at our, or when we look at this uh, slide, our real GDP per capita here is 55,534 in 2017. Now, the graph we were looking at previously was this one here. And notice for this one, 2017 is 55,212. Now, why are those numbers different? That's because periodically Statistics Canada changes the base year. So when we found our real GDP, when we took out inflation, remember we had to know a base year. Well, if we use a base year of 2011, then we get this number. If we use a base year of 2012, we get this number. So slightly different to adjust for um, the amount of inflation, and you have to have a comparator year uh, for measuring that inflation. So when we look at historical data, uh, we recognize that Stats Canada does update what the base year is and so has to update those historical numbers as well if they are in real terms to reflect that new base. All right, so we're going to go with this new data here, which is $2012, uh, dollars, and we have this real GDP that we're looking at. All right, so here we go. Here's the data from Stats Canada. Now, if we were going to find our own real GDP from Stats Canada, okay, we could go into Stats Can, and we could go to real GDP here. And again, we would go down to the bottom where all the tables are, and we're looking for a measure that is in real terms. Okay, so it's going to specify your base year. So here's that base year of $2012. Okay, and so you can look here. Um, these are focusing on changes quarterly, changes annually. We don't actually care about those pieces because we want the actual number. Uh, you can go here, this table, real GDP by expenditure count. It's breaking down the components. But really what we're looking for is the number. So we're looking for our real GDP from our table. So we're looking for this gross domestic product here. So 2.71 million. Now remember when you look at this number, this number, if we scroll back up, is in millions of chain dollars. So that means that we have to add to this number here, we have to add extra zeros. And in fact, because it says that they're millions, we have to add six zeros, okay? And we'll, we'll do that in just a moment. Now, this here is for the second quarter, so you can compare quarters, and we could look at economic growth um, from one year to the next. So again, we could go down to the original data, and we could pick our dates so that we look at the same quarter in two different years to get that GDP. Once we have our real GDP, the other thing we're going to need is population numbers. So let's go back. Go back to the main page of Stats Canada, and the top of this key indicators list is the population estimates. 
And so you can go into the original source data and you can get the populations for different provinces or the country a whole by quarters as well. So we would pick the population uh, for the same quarters as our real GDP. And so we can see right now there's just over 38 million people in Canada. All right, so we've actually pulled some data already for you. And instead of using the quarterly data, uh, what I did is I went and got the Stats Canada data that is the annual data. So it's not in the key indicators quick list that you have there. Uh, you can go into the search the top right and uh, look for our real GDP annual, uh, population annual, okay? Or just use, pick a quarter and use that period of time. All right, so here's our data. So notice that we still have that um, two trillion for our real GDP. And where we saw the number before, what we've done here is we've added those six zeros in. So be careful when you're pulling data from Stats Canada, look at the top of the table, the top of the table and figure out what it's in because they've shortened the number uh, in thousands or millions. So you want to make sure you add, if it's thousands, three more zeros. If it's millions, then six more zeros to our number. All right, so what we want to do is take this information, and our first step is to find our real GDP per capita for our three periods. So we have 2017 and 2018 and 2019. Okay, so all we do is we take our real GDP of 2 trillion, 21 billion, 900. 42 million. Okay, and we're going to divide that by the population, which in 2017 uh, we were sitting at 36 million. Notice those numbers now in 2020 we're sitting at 38 million. So you can see that over time they have gone up. All right, actually, I think we're going to have to make more space here. Let's do these separately. Okay, all right. So we throw that number into our calculator, 2021942, and our zeros. Okay, and we divide by 36540268. If you have a calculator that doesn't allow that big of number, you can shave off zeros by putting, for example, 2021942. If you do that, if you shave off those six zeros at the end, then when you divide, you need to do 36.540268 because you need to shave off the same number of zeros on the top and the bottom in your calculation. So we end up, oops, can't see that anymore. What was that number? 55,335. 55,335. Okay. So we'll repeat the process for 2018 and 2019. What is the real GDP per capita? How much are we producing after we take out inflation? per person in our population. All right, 2018, we're going to take 2078, 297, and our six zeros. All right, and then we're gonna divide by our population, 37. I don't know why only every other word seem, letter seems to be showing up here. 058856. All right, so again, we want to pop that into our calculator. 2078297. Ah, what the hell? 207-8297. All right, so I'll show you here. Um, 
that if we shave off the last six zeros, then I'm going to divide that by 37.058856. So you can see I'm getting in the same range. I'm getting in the 50 thousands. Uh, so we know that we've got it okay. Um, so if your calculator can't handle that, again, you can shave off as long as you shave the same number of zeros off the top and the bottom. All right, so there's 2017 and 2018. We can also do 2019. Okay. And again, we're just taking our number here, 2115. 265 with our zeros. And we're dividing that by the population at the time. 37593384. Okay, and we get 56267. I'm just going to write that down. Six two sixty-seven. All right, so now we can find economic growth using new minus old divided by old times 100. Okay. So to look at our economic growth from 2017 to 2018, we would take, ooh, I just grab my little protectory shield. Maybe that'll fix my problem here must be touching the screen and it's confused. All right, let's go back here. All right, so new minus old divided by old times 100, so that's gonna be 56 to, oh, let's use the right numbers here. 56081 minus 55335. And then new minus old divided by old, so divided by 55, 3, 3, 5, and we're going to multiply that whole sucker times 100. So 56, 0, 8, 1, minus 55, 3, 3, 5. Okay, so we get the top difference. Then we divide by the bottom. Okay, 55. Three, three, five. Okay, we get a number 0 0.0134, and we multiply that times 100 to turn it into a percent. And so, what we get from 2017 to 2018, ugh, I need to restart my computer apparently. All right, what we get is 1.3, what was that number? 1.35. So from 2017 to 2018, we see economic growth of 1.35%. Okay, what about from 2018 to 2019? So we're going to take our 56 to 67, new, minus old, 56, 081. And we're going to divide by old, 56, 081 times 100, okay, let's put that into our calculator, 56267 minus 56081. So we got the top there, now we need to divide by old, 56081, and we're going to multiply times 100. And so what we get for economic growth from 2018 to 2019 is point, what was that number? Point three three. Just double check that, yeah. Okay, so notice from 2017 to 2018, we grew 1.35%. From 2018 to 2019, we grew 0.33%. This is all pre-COVID. Uh, so I challenge you to take a look at whether there has been economic growth as we look at 2019 into 2020. 
And uh, you can even look at 2020 into 2021, since you can look at quarterly data uh, for 2021. Now, how does that compare? Well, if we look at the recession that we saw um, 2006, 2007, we start to feel the impact of that. It takes a little while to realize we're in a recession. Uh, we can see that negative economic growth from there. And then you can see economic growth is positive up to 2% in 2010 to 2011. 2013 2014, it's close to 2%. Then we see a drop in gas prices in that 15, 16 period. Uh, so then again, the economy in Canada was contracting. It, gas prices recovered. We started to see growth again in 2016 17 of 2.29%. We still see more growth in that 17 18 period, but not as much as in that 16 17, probably because a lot of that 2.29% is recovering from the losses in the year before. And then we can see it continue to slow down in 18, 19. And then my question for you, what happens when COVID hits as we look at 19, 20, 20, 21? If we look at economic growth over time, you can see here, those periods that we were talking about in terms of um, some of that negative economic growth, the recession or the great recession that we see in the 2008 period, and then the oil prices falling in the 15-16 period. And look, we can even start to see the impact of COVID as we look at 2020. You can see some of that negative economic growth there. So then what happens when we go from 2020 to 2021? Now, if we have a growth rate, we can use the rule of 70 to figure out how long it takes for something to double in size. So the rule of 70 came out when we didn't have calculators, we need to do some quick number crunching, um, quick estimate. And so it's a quick way to do a calculation for anything that has a rate. So you can use it for inflation. You can use it with economic growth. You can use it for the return on your investment. So, for example, you can look at how long it would take $1,000 to double if you had it in your savings account and your savings account earned 5% per year. You would take 70 divided by five. So we take whatever's the percentage and use it as just a normal number, 70 divided by five. It would take 14 years for the thousand dollars in your savings account to double if you're earning 5% per year. So we can use this information to look at how long it would take our GDP to double. So how long would it take the economy to double in size at the current growth rate? So if we go back to the numbers that we had before, if the economy was growing at 1.35%, then we can do 70 divided by 1.35, and it would take about 52 years for the economy to double. So we're currently at two tr just over $2 trillion in real GDP, it would take 52 years for that to double to over $4 trillion. Now, notice if we look at the 2018-19 number of 0.33%, we can use our rule of 70, 70 divided by 0.33. And to no surprise, it would take a lot longer for the economy to double in size if it's going if it's growing at only a third of a percent per year. 